Okay, so I'm going to record these in like 10 minute intervals so that I don't have the same problem with uploading them as I did last week. So you're probably going to have like two or three videos to watch. Sorry. Okay. So we left off talking about punishments, limiting criminal behavior. You guys had your questions to answer. Okay, so now. Uh, most serious crime in the U.S. is punished by imprisonment, but other societies lack the resources to build and maintain prisons. Yes, so it's not so much that the U.S. has more crime than other countries. We just have the resources to put people in prison. So, like I have here, you need money for buildings, to pay guards, and to feed slash clothe prisoners. The United States spends around $32,000 per year per prisoner. What else can you do for $32,000? Uh, you can have one night stay in a fancy hotel in Dubai. Um, the soap has gold flecks in it. You can uh, buy a chunk of an island in Nova Scotia. You can attend one year of college at uh, San Diego State University, which was my second choice if I hadn't gone to Charleston. Fun fact. Okay, so incarceration rates in the U.S. are way higher than any other country. So, shoot. This compares world incarceration rates of every U.S. state or a country. So it looks at it uh, per capita. Okay, so per capita, look at Louisiana, Mississippi. So you have all these states before you hit the U.S., all the way down here as a country. And then you have some other states before you get down to finally another country, Cuba, and then other states. Rwanda, Washington. So you have to get all the way through all these other countries until you finally hit the end of um, the end of the U.S. states. And then this is just similar data, just from a different year. So if you, I'll provide this link on Plus Portals, but if you go all the way down. It explains more about how they got the data and why each um, why each country is the way it is. So, for example, it says, um, where's the one about Rwanda? All right, so New Jersey and New York follow just after Cuba, although New York has been actively working on reducing its uh, prison population, it's still tied with Rwanda, which has the third highest national incarceration rate. Rwanda incarcerates so many people, 42 per 100,000, 492 per 100,000, because thousands are sentenced or awaiting trial in connection with the 1994 genocide that killed an estimated 800,000 people. So they're still putting people in jail for the crimes of the Rwandan genocide. That's why theirs is so high. Um, Next comes the state of Washington, which claims the same incarceration rate as the Russian Federation. Um, that's crazy. So I would suggest looking at these. So although our level of crime is comparable to those of other stable, internally secure, industrialized nations, the United States has an incarceration, incarceration rate far higher than any other country. Sorry, I can't talk tonight. Um, if we compare the incarceration rates of individual U.S. states and territories with that of other nations, for example, we see that 36 states and the District of Columbia have incarceration rates higher than that of Cuba, which is the nation with the second highest incarcer incarceration rate in the world. Um, okay, and then that's what I just read. Utah, Nebraska, and Iowa all lock up a greater portion of their populations than El Salvador, a country with a recent civil war and one of the highest homicide rates in the world. So why do we have such high incarceration rates? So first thing, um, what we talked about is harsh sentencing in the 70s. So we talked about like the crackdown on drugs. We talked about the three strike rule, disparities in race, which still exist, a rise in mental illness. Let's watch this. He is dead. Okay. 
Okay, so we briefly touched on this when we talked about the war on drugs, but this actually is a visual. Bodies all over, guys are shot in the head. In the early 1990s, TV news bombarded viewers with scenes of murder, mayhem, blood and guts. The war on crime, by then 20 years old, seemed lost. There's terrorism here in America. We live in fear, and it's not Beirut, and it's not Mogadishu. But the murder of a California child by a man with a 20-year criminal history was a tipping point, and a wave of anger swept the country. How could this maggot have slid through the system this many times without somebody saying, wait a minute, pal? New sentencing laws called three strikes, you're out, were seen as the answer to the repeat offender menace. When you commit a third violent crime, you will be put away and put away for good. Three strikes and you are out. With crime near historic lows today, did the lock em up approach work or did it get carried away? Despite its sunny reputation, California in the 1990s could be a dangerous place. Okay, I'm actually going to pause it right there and start a new video because otherwise I'm going to like stop it in the middle of the video. All right, bye. How do I get out of this?